Oh, you heard a little typing going on? That's because I just accepted a wedding RSVP because you know what? Multitasking is what StarCraft and life is about. Oh, welcome to Day 9 Daily 645, where we're learning to be a better gamer. This is part two. <clears throat> Good. Uh, in part two, we're going to follow up on what we saw in part one. A lot of cool, subtle little tricks going on at the very beginning that sets Jadong up into a very nice position. Whereas the French would say, position. And they would do so well, stroking a long mustache that's curly at the tips. These little counter-attacky doohickeys from Jadong are, uh, are, are much harder to do when there's not the usual hellion poking and prodding at the front. Um, Teja's doing a kind of an unusual build, but it's not that nutty. And these little moves like this are very strong. Just in general, they're strong because so often a Terran player is out in the middle of the map. I actually, if I can select this, where is his stuff? Where did his Hellions go? Oh, there they are. They actually, they came back the instant they saw the Zerglings. Let me actually back up 10 seconds. These Zergen counterattacks are very effective because, more often than not, Terrans are in the middle of the map. And as we see these Zerglings moving up, what's another reason why they're very, very effective? Well, because Teja went Command Center Barracks. Command Center Barracks gar almost guarantees that this will not be walled off. This is almost never walled off. So these Zerglings have a really high percentage of getting up into the main base. So, see you later, alligator. It's a brand new alligator. Very nice little counterattack by Jadong. Very easy to perform consistently. While this is going on, Jadong has the nice opportunity to get some scooting done. Oh, there's the two barracks. But also, Jadong is going to be just building Zerglings to replenish the lost Langs. And we see still, Spire comes out right on time. Baneling Nest pops out because, you know, we're losing lots of dudes and we want to make sure that we can defend ourselves. Really hard to defend a marine uh, Hellion army without Banelings. But in particular, we see that the evolution chambers that Jadong will soon enough build right here haven't been built yet. And this kind of makes sense for two reasons. For one, we saw that he went for a sort of spire. Oh, God, he's tearing. We saw he went for a starport. Um, which means he's going to have less marines. Our mulas are better. He's also going to be doing more drops with medevacs. Mutalists are very important for that. It's just a very natural response. I track down air things with my air things. So if I see air things, I get air things. Durr. Great. Uh, at a more um, subtle level. Lots of subtlety. Um, I find that hilarious. My hair looks so dumb. <laughs> Dude, guys, don't cross the streams, okay? Don't don't cross the streams. Egon's orders. All right, we gotta stay on topic. The other subtle reason is that if he is spending his gas getting starport units, his double engineering bay is delayed. So his delay of upgrades makes our delay of upgrades more reasonable. Oh, oh, and let me just note something that I think it might be obvious to most, but just in case. I said, we saw air, so we're going to respond very naturally by going for a fast spire. Spire and Spire Tech takes gas, so we can't both get Spire Tech and Evo Chambers at the same time. We kind of have to commit to one or the other first before going back and getting the other one. So great, not a huge blow to the Terran economy, but it's it's enough of a blow that it's pretty pretty cool. So now we start to see Jadong leave his Zerglings a little bit farther back. Checks this scout, and like clockwork begins to move out to these sides. He's kind of spying what's up. He's going to be maybe a little more willing to kind of leave them back, but there is this there's this concept that we talk about again and again and again, which is that if you build something for defense, figure out how you can use it again for offense. 
This is why mass cannon is not as good as something like sentries early on for Protoss, because you can use the sentries in a later battle. We're going to see Jadong do wonderful things with the Ling Bane Ling. Small Zergling moves are amazingly high percentage. Just like incredibly high percentage. And I'm actually curious, does... Oh wow, mules don't show up on the workers killed. Whoa! I never knew that. Rat. What? How long have I been casting? Three. Uh, th uh, this game, like, almost three and a half years. Are you serious? Wait a minute. I don't know everything about StarCraft II. <gasps> I thought I'd solved the game. Mm. What a tragedy to find out that I am but a mere mortal. I thought everything in StarCraft II had been known. Do 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 do. Anyways, back to Jadong being the man. Alright, cool. So, the last little piece to this puzzle... Oh yeah, so we, we, we get the evolution chambers because we did our early opening. We kind of have to go for the layer because we see his starport, which means we kind of have to get gas. And if we're committing to gas instead of minerals early, it means we're going to be low on minerals. So we may as well get these evolution chambers since these take mainly gas due to the upgrades. And then let's go ahead and get the other gas geysers because we're doing gassy things like mutilus. So the last thing that pops on in is the macro hatch. If it was an opening that, say, opened up with these two evolution chambers. We would have blown most of our gas already, and we would not have even gotten geysers three and four. So it's much easier to get an early macro hatch. And what do you know, Joe? What do you know, Joseph? This little push, it's easy enough to pick off the marines and whatnot with just Ling Bane Ling. However, the fact that we went for a spire so quickly allows us to have something that will permanently repel this. Imagine if our spire was getting close to done. How much of a pain in the patootie that would be. So the fact that we hold all that off makes our fourth base much safer. More and more expansions always safer when we have the air units to defend them. So let's go ahead and do what we call rounding out. Hitting the 12 minute mark. This is when there is the other good old convergence point. A one, a two, a three, four, hatch. Do 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 do. We have all six geysers. Oh yes, look at that. We got the one one ups coming up on up. Yes. We get the plus one because hell, why not get everything that begins with one? We're getting baneling speed. And of course we're getting the fourth hatch. Mm. Queen count, it's at four. That's enough for all of our hatches, and even one left over to spread creep. There she is. Hello, sweetheart. And uh, everyone knows what this moment is, but isn't it amazing how Jadon got there? Did a bunch of damage with just a couple of lings. Even has Mutilus coming out to defend the drops. Oh, <gasps> that dong, da dong, dong, dong. Moving to the center, why would we do that? To permit us to spread creep, but what do you know? A couple of lings moving out to mid will probably... Uh, it's okay to leave those a little bit more passive because we don't have any scouting information. But at this very vulnerable early age in the Terran lifespan, this is just great. Look at these wonderful flanks that Jadong's setting up for himself just consistently. Sneaking little jerglings and little banelings. Moving out with little mutars and doing little muta things. Now this map does kind of permit us to do that with a, with a bit more ease. Due to the fact that the distances are so big. And the fact that this watchtower is here. Jadong still does it on all the other maps. Now in terms of the worker count, a like 80 is good. And if you don't know what that means. Not, not that you don't know what 80 means, but like... <laughs> how it should look in the game. It's uh, geysers saturated at four bases. 
Your starting three bases have 16 workers at each of them. And then your fourth base has like six to eight. That's good. Sometimes 10 if you're feeling daring. It's about that. You have like a little over half capacity at the other base. Yeah, so, so that's 22 workers at the original bases for 66, and then the two in each gas brings you to seven, or three in the geyser seven and eight brings you to 72. So six to eight to 10 is like 78 to 82. <gasps> that's how you know. So look at that. It's got about 16 here. It's got about 16 here. It's got about 16 here. And so he's just going to get enough to shove guys in gas and have a few extra leftover mining. So here's where things get really sexy. For one, Jadong is getting pneumatized carapace. This is the essentially free overlord speed upgrade that's critical for overseers because their speed goes from 1.88 to rocket ship. Oh my god. Trio Cluel. Just an amazing reference to David Sedaris. Six to eight, did you say? Uh, for any of you who want to know, please hop on YouTube and look up six to eight black men. It's one of the funniest things. It's not at all what you think. I know exactly how it sounds, and everyone's like, <gasps> "It's one of the funniest." Oh, it's it's, it's very clever. So, one of the big reasons why we get the Overseer speed is so this doesn't happen. Ooh, didn't that hurt? But fortunately, Mutilus heal faster than Wolverine, so we're going to be fine. And Jadong is also setting himself up for some nice counterattacks and all that. But I want to note some important bits about what's going on unit-wise. Up to this point, look at that, not a lot of Banelings. It's mainly upgrades, Zerglings, expanding, and then just these counterattacks. So we see this sort of attempted little uh, splurge by Teja. This is a usual little attack timing from Terrans. Anything past 13 is when they really want to just step on the gas, but here, Jadong is going to begin pulling him every which way. Now, Jadong is actually not building Mutalisks as he's setting himself up over here because he needs gas to flood Banelings back home. If an attack begins to roll down this minimap, he can always counterattack here, use the Mutalisks to slowly get back to base or to join him in the counterattack, and then Banelings to stay alive. If he doesn't save that gas and, say, begins flooding Mutalisks right now, he's in for a lot of trouble. Oh, I'm on normal speed. Or as I like to call it, the, game, the, the speed the game should be probably played on. As the Mutalisks are pulling back, that's when I think it's okay to begin rebuilding the Mutalisks. In the absence of Mutalisks, we really need the damn Banelings. But now we have yet another standard moment. All the stuff on the defensive. Overlord speed being utilized in more than one way. Overlords spreading themselves out pretty much along the edges of the map. You can spread it out more in the mid, but it's easy to get picked off by drops. And here's what just sort of blew my mind, blew my fledgling newbie caster brain. While this attack is clearly, clearly getting set up in mid, I mean, we can even see on the Teja cam, he's got Oh, he's got stuff. Actually, I'm trying to hit the U button. Yeah, he's got 43 Marines. He's got them sort of moving down in packs. He's scanning. He's clearing stuff out. He's getting ready to move the, move the remainder of the troops. Jadong still sets himself up to counterattack. The instant he sees any movement in the middle, in fact, he's preparing to do these kinds of things while charging all the way up on in mid. Now, I talked a little bit about some of these numbers, where previously Jadong was being a little bit too light on the Mutalisks and too heavy on the Banelings. What this resulted in is an army that was sort of doomed from the get-go. Oops. So, 
I'm trying to think of how to, the best way to describe this qualitatively. Zerglings are just the core unit. They're the unit that you build because you have minerals left over. Uh, I mean, Zerglings certainly a really, really, really good unit. Um, but they're just, they're, they're well-rounded as a unit. They just get in there and do a little bit of damage, and if you have a lot of them there, you're doing a lot of damage. They're, they're a core army. Um, the Mutalisks are your skill value unit. You can pick off a couple Marines here and there, pick off a Medivacs, pick off Mines, do a little bit of extra damage to chase him down and pick off retreating things. If you are good, your Mutalists are what are going to let you leverage the fact that you're good. Banelings are the, um, they're sort of the high-low unit. They're the unit that's going to deal a lot of damage or backfire really badly. They're, they're, they're the kaboomy unit to deal with all the Marines. I'm not that interested in Banelings because everyone sort of knows how Banelings work. They nail it or they miss, but when you get a reasonable enough number of them, they actually start to function a little bit more like the Zergling. That's the big point I want to make with them. They'll definitely punish mistakes hard, but if you're good enough, they function like a Zergling. You're just going to use them with the Zerglings to just pick off a kind of reasonable amount of Marines. And there you go. Mutalists are the value unit. So Jadong was failing because, or in, in uh, previous dailies, such as the daily we analyzed Poulton, and if someone could let me know what that daily number is, I'd love to be able to reference it. I'll look it up in the break next time otherwise. But in this position, with 19 Mutalisks, Jadong can actually chase stuff down and pick things off before he was trying to go with 10 to 12 and flooding Banelings to stay alive. I love this modern Jadong that's getting up to a solid number of Mutalisks, but then not over Mutalisking and getting to like 40. In fact, right around the 15 minute mark, which is very early in the game, we see an infestation pit pop down. This is probably the biggest surprise of this entire game. To see something go down that early on. So we see a nice middling mix of Zerglings, Banelings, and Mutalists. Jadong uh, is just doing like a skill that I, I'm actually not really going to be going into extraordinary depth on, which is... If you see an army you can kill, you should go kill it. We see Zerglings just dealing damage as core value units should do. We see Mutalists, look at this, These, this is the, the, the clever skill unit that moves around to a side and gets value. Banelings, this core unit that Teja just kind of has to deal with, has to micro around, and Mutalists are going to punish and chase down all the remaining stuffs. Great. So that was a good engagement. Again, I want to note, Jadong is going to be hovering between 20 and 26 Mutalists, not quite going Scarlet mode and going all the way up to 30 to 40 Mutas. But look at that juicy early hive. We got about 80, and we notice three in each gas, and around six to eight, did you say? So cool. Let's just state some obvious crud at this point in time. Yep, it's going to be in 24 right now. Jadong's building some Zerglings. Jadong's building some Banelings and is in a defensive posture. May as well expand if we're building defensive units. More Banelings going down right up in center mid. Some engagements going on. A couple Banelings move forward. The value skill unit, the Mutalisk, getting the value due to Jadong's skill. A drop sneaketh by an army doth thusly arriveth. Um, this is this is what I would call the pretty typical stuff. Lings, Mutas, and Banelings being fast and nimble units. Teja trying to still pick and pull and prod them in varying directions. Uh, I'm really not that interested in this part because everyone's seen this. These battles are really exciting and really cool and really compelling, but what's making Jadong Jadong is the fact that here we actually see he's getting these melee and uh, he's getting the orange upgrades and soon enough he's gonna get this other orange upgrade and then he might get the ultraless upgrade and get the orange quartet as I like to call it because I like catching names well all this battling is going on remember these few zerglings that were up here well Jadon continues to set himself up these flanks 
that after he's gotten through this middling period, he can do little counterattacks like this. Teja amazingly responded in time and successfully deflected this little push. But it's still costing Teja a little bit in terms of the reinforcement. Jadong is controlling this so well. Not getting too high on that front. Spending a good amount of gas, staying relatively even with the Terran and upgrades. No Banelings, because uh, he doesn't actually have that. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So Jadong's just doing the usual spotting. Now, I'm going to speed things up because I want to do a little recap for a moment. Uh, actually, I want to do a recap, then I want to speed things up. So, right around the 12-minute mark is where we tended to stop and say, Oh yeah, oh yeah, we're, we're sort of always in this position. This is just kind of typical how stuff goes in this. And we notice that once we get to the this 19 and a half minute mark, this is generally where players begin to decide to head up to Hive. But Jadong's already gotten his Hive done. Jadong's also hovering at a very nice number of Mutalists, around 24-ish. And, I mean, I'm sure you all know this, but 24 units fill up a single panel here. So it's really easy to know if you are ahead or behind, and you can sort of tap... Uh, the T button to get to the right amount. So this is just a very gorgeous, nice setup that Jadong has set himself up in. And this is where we start to see, in my eyes, the coolest parts of this game. Jadong's setting himself up with these Zerglings that were originally just built for defense. You normally just mass up Lings and Bane Lings to be able to hold on. What happens in these tense periods? where there's battles going on non-stop. Yeah, we build Banelings when we start to see an army coming. The rest of the time, though, we build Lings and Mutalisks. That's the sort of mode that most players are in. Jadong, though, is stopping around 24 Mutas, maybe getting a few extra here and there. And then he's actually flooding Banelings. If Teja is attacking, these Banelings will be very useful for defense. If Teja is not attacking, as we see now, Jadong sets up along this right flank and this left flank, obviously avoiding this little orb here, which is very unusual. Most players would either be stockpiling gas, uh, beginning to build infestors, or just doing the usual Ling Infester, Ling Muta. Ling, and then burning all the gas on a big unit. And they would treat Banelings as an emergency response. But look at this. Jadong moves his Mutalus up and around and sees his force coming out. And this is actually reminding me a lot of Protoss versus Terran, where the Protoss have Zealot counterattacks and all that with warp-ins. We start to see, yeah, the mines connect. But you know what? You can ha happily let mines connect. It's not really a big deal. As long as the Mutalists get out in time and have a little bit of uh, time to heal, you're going to be fine. We didn't actually get the chance to see it. Jadong's units kind of glitched out on the other side. But this Zergling Baneling counterattack would have been amazing to knock this down and sweep up into this base. Jadong accidentally clicked moved, so they decided to go all the way around to try to get up into here. So this kind of is an unfortunate misclick. But I want you to just fantasize with me. Ooh, yeah. This knocking down this front part. So again, stopping around 24-ish. Really, really cool uh, technique. Whatever needs to stay home for defense will be revealed by Teja attacking. Cool, he's attacking. I'll stay home and defend. You know what's happening right now? Well, Teja's doing some drops. Teja's not really attacking. But now that Teja is preparing an attack, these forces, rather than splitting up and having some down here and some over there, these forces can easily just bunch together and pool here for a defense. So let's just go ahead and see this in action. See this entire set of units? Yeah, they're heading all the way up here to try to defend this attack as normal. And the last thing that I wanted to note before we take a brief break is that Jadong, very wise and very disciplined about recognizing when he can't save a base. And then just doing these really cool counters. Like big counters. Like mega freaky scary counters. And they're all, even though this position looked kind of weird, it was still geared up to try to take out a fourth base. 
Banelings guarding the Mutalisks. So Jadong can potentially get a guaranteed kill on this command center. Although it kind of stinkers that he can't. No big deal, seven more Ultralisks on the way. Because Jadong was really disciplined about hovering at a pretty exact amount of Mutalisks. And sure, he was building a lot of Banelings, but still, the gas buildup is substantial. After seven Ultralisks have been built, there's still 1,400 in the bank. What a Zerg dream. Ooh. The most important thing to note from part two is the way Jadong deals with his mid-game composition. Mutalisks, absolutely the value unit. The better you are, the more value you'll get out of them. The worse you are, the better you'll... The quicker you get your butt kicked because you're not controlling your mute as well. But Jadong, therefore, quickly gets up the money number of mutas, which is around 20 at first, and then going up to like 24, 26. I dare say 27. What's going on with the rest of the funds? Well, Jadong's just building a lot of Zerglings and then building a bunch of Banelings. Not response Banelings that are so traditional in ZVT. Rather, just building them nonstop. If an attack is coming, cool, then everything's going to stay home and defend, as we saw in the first half of the mid-game. If Teja starts to pull back, this is where all these forces that we've built, we just split up onto these two halves of the map, and we can use our Mutalisks, one Ling Zergling, excuse me, one Bane Ling Zergling pack, and another Bane Ling Zergling pack to get some guaranteed damage. Really cool. When we come back, we're going to see this game degenerate into complete psychoticness. It's going to be a base race. And uh, I'm, that's just what's going to happen. It's going to be very exciting.